Welcome to Mike's Man Cave and in today's video I've got some XB and some XA GT or GS gauges. Okay, these are the XB ones, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, and that's also XB, and these are XA. If you compare the fuel gauge, you can see that the needle in the XA, which is the bottom one, swings the other way. And you've got the same here, the volt gauge in the XA swings the other way. You can even see the numbers go the opposite direction. So this top one here is XB, this bottom one here is XA. Now some people will argue that um, some XBs come out with these gauges. They possibly did. Uh, more likely someone has changed the gauges over the years and did not realise or didn't have the correct gauge. These cars are way over 40 years old now and a lot of people have changed a lot of things in these cars over the years. Okay, it's quite easy to swap these gauges out. Um, the XA gauges will work perfectly in the XB and vice versa. Okay, there's no problems at all. One of these gauges does have a built-in voltage regulator and that regulator will feed all the other three gauges. So all four gauges do not run on full 12 volt power. What happens if this regulator fails? It generally fails in the closed position. So that means all the four gauges will be getting full power, full 12 volt. And when that happens, you will see your gauges deflect fully for a very short time and then they burn out and they will no longer work. And you have just destroyed a set of very expensive and hard to replace gauges. So let's have a look at where this actual regulator lives and it does live inside the fuel gauge here. Okay, I've already taken these apart to make it a bit easier and quicker for you. And now if we have a look, this thing here is the actual regulator. Okay, it's not very fancy. And it's not very complicated and what happens is when the voltage goes this opens up and this closes and this happens very fast while there's power going through it and that effectively reduces the voltage or the amount of power that goes to each one of these gauges okay it's a very very basic sort of device and they do, after 40 years, tend to fail. I have seen plenty of these gauges just get burned out. And what you'll see once they're burned out, all the mechanisms here, see how they're slightly discolored? That's still fine. These gauges work perfectly. They've all been tested, okay? But that will just char black. So this is what a, this is what a used gauge looks like on the inside. If you see these charred black in here, that means they've burned out and the resistor has failed. Okay, this one's still pretty good. So what you'd be doing is you'd be cutting that little metal strip there, which effectively bypasses this regulator here before it fails and fries all your dash gauges. Or worst case scenario, it might even start a small dash fire. Okay, so it's probably a good idea to actually get in there, cut that piece, and then buy yourself one of the um, commercially available electronic regulators. The difference with the electronic regulators is that they're a lot more reliable, okay? They don't rely on this sort of thing happening there endlessly the whole time that you're driving your car to regulate the amount of power that goes to your gauge. It regulates the power going to your gauges electronically and generally what happens when the electronic regulator fails, it fails in the open position. So it just means your gauges won't work and you can just replace the regulator and you haven't destroyed, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars worth of gauges. Okay, here's an actual dash fascia with the gauges installed. And here you can see what I've done. There's the electronic regulator, okay, it easily sits behind your dash fascia and it's just attached in there with some double-sided tape. Now all your connections on the back of your dash from your car will still be standard, okay, nothing changes, it stays exactly as it is. You just connect your red and white wire, your yellow and white, your green, your white, okay, your black and your green, okay, and nothing changes. 
So this is your regulator, so power goes in there, 12 volt. And then your regulated power comes out here, feeds your gauges, power, power to your gauge there. See, it's got a little insulator on there and power to your gauge here. Okay, now this gauge here is different. It does not get powered off your regulator because that's your voltage gauge, okay? So that gets um, power straight from the alternator because it does read your voltage, okay? That's what it's for. But this little device here will definitely stop all your gauges here from burning out and getting cooked if your little regulator that lives in there ever fails, okay? Don't forget to cut that wire so that there's no more power going to that regulator when you're doing it. And then again, power goes into your regulator, comes out of your regulator, feeds your gauge, which is your fuel gauge over there. Then it goes across and feeds power to your temperature gauge. And then it goes across here and feeds power to your oil pressure gauge. Okay, this comes from your oil pressure sender. And these ones is your um, earth for your voltmeter and your power input from your alternator, which gives you your reading for your voltage. Okay, so there's a very basic explanation of how your GT GS dash works and how you can save yourself some very, very expensive repair bills. Now, if you found this video useful, please do me a favor, give me a big thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button for more videos from Mike's Man Cave.